Detroit. More than a church, more than an outreach, all that and much more. C-L-U-B, Christ living undivided bride. Welcome. A revival coming through the body of Christ. This is a revival coming through no big eyes, little U's or in betweens. This is a revival. Say, he who abides under the shadow of the Almighty God shall be covered by his wings. Hallelujah. That spiritual creation that's inside of you, that one the devil's been trying to tear up, is going to come out and come alive. Praise the Lord. God bless you and welcome. To the Revival for Christ Club, a ministry with a vision built on a plan, the Word of God. I'm Apostle Timothy Vanover. And I am Apostle Jenny Vanover. And together, our vision is to bring revival to the body of yes, Christ. Yes, amen. In power, spirit, and truth. Amen. We want you to know that in the kingdom of God, there are no big eyes, little U's, or in betweens. You are a called vessel of the Lord. God's got a purpose and a plan for you. All you have to do is rise up in His Word and Spirit. Let it come alive in your life. So good to have you with us today. We're so glad to have you on this program. God bless you. If you need prayer counseling right now, please pick up the phone. Give us a call. Prayer warriors are standing by. The number is area code 405-793-1777. That's 405-793-1777. Prayer warriors standing by. You know, Jenny, one of our really good friends, I know you're really good friends with Sonia, and I'm really good friends with Chuck, come all the way from Gainesville, Florida. And Chuck and Sonia McSweeney were with us in revival just a few weeks back. As a matter of fact, you and I just got back from revival with them in Truman, Arkansas. And it was a powerful time in the Lord. We'll be speaking with him about some of the messages that he preached here. You'll get to see portions of those messages on this program. But anyway, we're so glad you decided to join us today. we got a big program, a lot in store for you. I'll tell you, before we do anything else, Jenny, why don't we start in prayer? Why don't you lead us in prayer, Jenny? Lord, we are thankful today for this opportunity to come into your presence and to glorify your name. And all those who are with us and watching, we ask God that you would pour down a great yes. anointing. Father, we pray that as the word is delivered, that everybody who's in attendance and viewing, that they will feel the power and the spirit, and they will feel your presence in a great and mighty way. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. All right, it's time to take you to our brand new segment. It's called Ministry Insights. Here I am interviewing Mr. Chuck McSweeney just a few weeks ago during a dynamic revival at the club. Christ living, undivided God. Here is Apostle Chuck McSweeney. Hey, praise the Lord. God bless you. Welcome to the Revival for Christ Club. I'm Apostle Timothy Vanover, and I'm very happy to have you with us uh, on today's program. But I'm very excited because I have a very special guest here. I love this guy today. He's my brother in the Lord. Uh, we just finished having a wonderful, powerful yes, Holy Ghost revival. Oh, man. I mean, it, it was great. Yes. It was good. It was good. So I've got my good friend here, Apostle <laughs> Chuck McSween. Thank you, my From friend. Gainesville, Florida. I just want to talk to you a little bit, Chuck. You know, the revival this week. Oh, man. I just felt so refreshed, so filled up. You know, as I was sitting there, I just sat on the edge of my seat going, man, Lord, this is good food. This is yes. good food. Chuck yes. preached three very dynamic and powerful messages. And I want to talk to him a little bit about some of those messages later on in the program. You will get to see some of those messages. So we're going to talk to him a little bit about it today and kind of get his perspective Man. on where he thinks God's taking the church today and what he's doing today. So Chuck, say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's so good to be here in the presence of the Lord and to be able to have a small, small part in what God is doing in his kingdom. Amen. I believe in, uh, I've told uh, Apostle Tim Van over here that when I came into his church, I didn't come in with man's wisdom. I want to come God. in Amen. here with a with a demonstration of Amen. the power Praise of the Holy Amen. Ghost of God. Amen. Amen. Because I believe in the Word of God when He reached with anointing. Yes, the power of the Holy God. Ghost. Amen, bro. Because that is what changes. That's what it's about. like. That's, so what, that's, that's where we're we know. Going. You know the thing that people cut out so much, and, and and I understand it because I think you even said it in one of the messages. And I, people don't like it because they can't control. It. Yes. You know, see, see, the thing is, the anointing of God is what destroys the yokes. Yes. Right? So many churches don't understand. 
if you would get in that moment of spiritual submission yes. to God, where you say, God, not my will, but your will, yes. leading by the Spirit, that anointing would flow through Absolutely. you like, you know, I love that scripture, from God, through God, back to me. Yes. And that's exactly how it works. Man, that's true, brother. I, I feel like today yeah. in the churches, we've, we've given a, our flesh too much Oh, position. Amen. In the Amen. Our flesh has nothing to do. The Bible teaches me that if I'm going to worship God, yes. the only way I'm able to worship Him is in the Spirit. Oh, praise God. And Amen. the Holy Amen. Ghost That's is right. the thing that's going to lead us and teach us and guide us in how we can truly worship a God oh, who God. is a Spirit. Amen. So how am I going to worship, worship a God in my that's flesh. A Spirit <laughs> in my flesh? Amen. The Bible Amen. teaches me if I walk in the Spirit, Come on, I am a son, son of God. God, living God, and that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be, too. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, see, the thing is this, you know, uh, we are trying to interpret and bring knowledge and wisdom yes. out of the Word of God with our own knowledge, and that's the yes. impossibility. Not going to happen. Because this Word has been sealed by the Holy Spirit and the anointing of God. Yes. The only way to, to get true revelation and true knowledge of is to allow the Holy Ghost yes. to move That's along. who wrote it. That's who did. Yeah, well, you know, it's, you, you think it's so mm -hmm. easy. He says, God is a spirit and they that must worship him, must worship him. Must. Must. It's must. not an option. And then the, uh, the part that, that I think people just need to understand, God wants to bring himself alive in your life, yes. in your actions, yes. in your calling, whatever it is. Now, you know, you preached a message the other night, first message you preached, yes. I love it, was on information versus revelation. Yes. And I want you to share with our audience out there what inspired that particular message or what did you want to bring across in that message? Great message. Man. Yes. Well, I've been uh, at a lot of different churches, mm -hmm. uh, going into a lot of different type of ministries and listening to men and women of God that are up there preaching and all. And what I have found in the churches is the church is full of information. Uh, and information is good, but information only informs. There you go. Okay. It will inform you. It will educate you. And that's wonderful. But I believe that people go into the house of God for one reason. Mm -hmm. They go in for a life change. Oh, that's it. Really. Praise God. Amen. So I believe that information informs, but I believe revelation change. transforms. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I don't know about you, but I don't want to go into a church and leave the way I came. Oh, praise I want to go into a church and leave change. I want to transform and turn around. The only thing to do yeah. that is the Holy Ghost of God. And that's the revelation that we yeah. need in our church. That's so true. I, I just love that message because the way that you presented it and put it out there, I think it made it very clear. One of the things I love about the ministry that God has put in you yes. is the practicality of application yeah. that God gives you with the Word. I, don't, I just love it. Try to make it simple. You do. And, and the thing is, but here's what gets me. You make it simple. Yeah, but it's really powerful yes. revelation. That's right. I mean, that's, that's the right. part I love the most about yes. it. It's exactly. powerful. It's anointing. It is deep. Absolutely. But it's simple. Yes. You just put it in the application. I mean, hey, I love it. It's got go. Jesus coming off. Yes. Amen. But you know, folks, what's something we need to realize and something we need to understand we get, need to get revelation into our lives. That's right. Revelation is what brings transformation. You yes. can never have manifestation without transformation. And the True. place God wants to take you to is manifestation. He wants you to get, get revelation, apply revelation, transform, and then manifest what's been. Um, and that ministers to other people. It's great. Uh, <laughs> all right. So change me, God. Change, <laughs> change, change yes. us all, right? Yes. See, the one thing that we, I know we both agree on, 100% yes. on this, we agree. This ain't about us. No, this is about no Jesus way. Christ. And we're not yes, here. The only reason that we're sharing this with you today is because we're excited about it. Yes. We're excited about what God's doing, what God is going to do, yes. and where God's Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, before I get into the scripture, I'm going to share with you something that the Holy Spirit shared with me a few months ago. I was praying and seeking the Lord. And looking at what's going on, not only in the world, but in our churches. Come on, brother. Unfortunately, some of the things that are happening in the world are happening in our churches. Yes, brother. Come on. And I know it's the enemy that's trying to bleed into our churches, to bring division in our churches, to bring hurt, to come just to tear down the house of God. That's what the enemy wants to do. So I prayed and seeking the Lord, and the Holy Spirit came down, uh, came upon me, and he said, Get your pen and paper, and I want you to write this. So I'm going to read to you before I read the scripture what the Holy Spirit gave me. I want, I want you just to listen now. Now, I read this to my wife after I wrote it, and she goes, huh, that's not Not because it was so profound, but she knew I was smart enough, right? <laughs> come on, she said, yeah, that's God. You, yeah, you, 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 you didn't come up that way. <laughs> that's not you. That's God. So I want you to listen to what the Holy Spirit gave you. It's a short little version that I wrote. And I want you to 
hear what the Holy Spirit put in my heart. Praise God. It says here, and it's a message to the church. What we need today in the church is more than information. Come on, Come on now, brother. I'll say it. Come on. Come here. We need revelation. Woo. Come on, brother. Come on. Information informs, but revelation transforms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The church has been informed of how we should look. How we should speak, Come on. how we should walk, Come on. how we should sing, Come on. how we should preach. Oh, hey. Come on. Come on See, we've got information on how us preachers are supposed to preach yep. so that the congregation is happy. Come on. Say it now. Come on. I didn't come to make you happy. Come on. The Lord sent me to Oklahoma all the way from Gainesville, Florida, amen, not to make you happy. But to bring you a revelation of the Lord of God. That you may grow and be everything that God has called you to be. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. It says, even how we should conduct our services. Oh, yeah, they're giving us information on how we're supposed to run our service. Come on now, say it. Come on, you say it. But what we need in our church. Is a revelation from the Holy Spirit on how we need to be transformed into a new creation. Allow Him to teach us how to look, how to speak, how to walk, how to sing, how to preach, and allow Him to have complete control of our church service. Today in our churches, in our society, we have done just the opposite. Instead of transform, we have conformed. Come on. Come on. That's good preaching. Yeah. That's the truth, brother. Come on. Listen, this is the Holy Ghost we like or not. Come on. Come on now. He said instead of transforming, we have conformed. Say it. In Deuteronomy 28, 13, he says, he will make us the head, not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. We, the church, is not to conform to the world or society or our culture. But we are to be transformed to be like Him. Yeah. Okay. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't need to be like the world, I need to be like Him. Yeah. Come on, church. Come on. He didn't tell you to follow me, He said to follow Him. Amen. We need to be more like Christ. Goes on to say, we have bowed down to what society has said is acceptable. And society changes and lowers its standards every day. Oh, it's getting quiet now. I'm now got to listen. The world and its standards of what is acceptable are just like the man who built his house upon the sand. Come on now, brother. Amen. And the rains and the waves and the water came and, and, and generations come and go and they begin to change what they consider to be acceptable. Amen. You say that now. Come but on. my friends, I say to the church and I say to society and I say to the world that there is a church. Come on. Come on. Say it. There's a church that is built upon the rock that will never change. It will never conform to be what is considered acceptable to man. The church of the living God is solid and is led by the Holy Ghost, who is our teacher, our leader, and our God. And the Word of God will stand when the world is on fire. So I say to all who will listen, we must not conform to the world in order to be accepted, but we must transform to his likeness that through us the world will accept Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Now that was a word from the Holy Ghost. That's why tonight I want to preach to you a message titled, Information versus 
is a revelation. Information versus revelation. Listen, information can be factual. Information can be true. Information can be solid. But listen, all it does is inform. But revelation. Let me tell you something about revelation. I'm talking to the boss today. Revelation is just a fact Come on. that has not yet been revealed. Come on, oh, praise God. God. Amen. That's right. Just because you ain't heard it, don't mean it, don't mean it ain't real. Come on. Come on. Just because you ain't heard it, don't mean it ain't true. But it's a revelation of God's word that when it's revealed by the Holy Ghost is what transforms us to be the sons and the daughters of God. Because the Bible says those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's right. Come on. Come on now. You can go to college and get information. Good information. I put down college. College is good. Knowledge is good. Bible college is good. It's information. But I'm here to tell you that with just information, you will not change people's lives. That's right. They say, brother, but we'll teach you the Bible from the beginning to the end. That's wonderful. But brother, I'm here to tell you the letter kill him. Come on. But the Spirit of God yeah. will bring life. Praise God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Some people say, and the world says, knowledge is power. I say to you, my friend, the Holy Ghost is power. Listen, I can argue with you or discuss this with you. Listen, the disciples followed Jesus who was the word made flesh. They followed him for three years. They were informed. Come on. Come on. Come on. He taught them. He worked miracles. He brought healing. He brought some wonderful teachings. He was the word of God. But what did Jesus tell him when he ascended into heaven? I gave you the word. I taught you the word. Hey, go to college. Go to Bible college. Get the word. I don't get the word, but let me tell you somebody. Jesus said that ain't enough. Jesus said, I want you to go. Back to Jerusalem. And he said, I want you to go and I want you to stay there. Some of you need to learn to stay there. Get out the boat. Yeah, that's right. You got to get out that boat. Uh, 
That's right. That's right. Absolutely. I'll tell you, you know, and, and the, this message takes people and it's okay. You know, we all have a testimony what God oh, has brought us yeah. from. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know about, and some people have been in church their whole life and that's wonderful. But some people like myself has not been in yeah. church all their lives. Some of us was raised in church and then straight away gotcha, gotcha. and got into things that we shouldn't have got into. But yeah. the, the whole basis of this message is Jesus came to where I was. Because people say, oh, I found Jesus. And I always say, listen, oh, I love that. I love Jesus that. wasn't lost. He <laughs> never been didn't lost. have to go find him. He knew right where he yeah. was. Jesus found me. Amen. Jesus Praise came God. to where I was. Amen. Just like he did Amen. with Simon Peter. He yeah. came to Simon Peter's boat. He came to where sure Peter did. was. Sure and he ministered to Peter. Sure but there was a time in Peter's life that Jesus said, okay, I don't want you to remain where I found you. Woo. Praise God. God. Come Amen. on. Come on now. You don't want Jesus to come back for another visitation and find you in the same Amen. place you was on, when he you the first time. Hey Amen. He's challenging us to come out of that boat, out of that place of being comfortable. Woo, praise God. God. We like to go to church and be comfortable, but I feel like the Lord is calling us out of comfortable. Oh, you're I right. I feel like right. the praise Lord God. is saying, listen, the boat rides over. That's it's right. Time it's to time to walk on the water, baby. Yes, amen. That's what time it is. It's time for us to step out, amen, and be what God God's calling us to be. be. That's amen. where we're at, brother. Well, you know, we're in that place in that moment you know, with all these things that have been going on with the pandemic and all the oh, racial yeah. tensions and yeah. all those other things. If you don't look around and realize something has happened, Oh, yeah. In the spiritual, oh, yeah. in the heavenly, something's happening. And it's time for the body of Christ to not allow itself to be burdened and messed right. up right. with all this nonsense. Yes. We need to start seeking God like we've never sought Him before. Yes. We need to let the revelation be more than just a concept, that's more right. than just preaching. It needs to come alive Amen. in your life. That's and that's true. what we're looking for. Amen. So I, I love that, but that's such a good message. Yes. You know, my wife loved that message. <laughs> She got in the boat. She got in the boat. We told her to get back. I told her, get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. <laughs> but the key is, you know, the thing I loved about that particular message, too, is how you brought out the uh, deal about John, you know, and when he saw Jesus walking that way. Yes. And he said, uh, Lord, if you bid me come, I'll come. Yeah. And he didn't hesitate. Once yep. they, you know, he'd been raised a fisherman his entire life, so he yep. knew he couldn't swim. Yeah. You know, I'm sure at some point, Dad probably picked him out. Yeah. So you're going to have to learn to swim, boy. There yeah. you go. That's right. But he never... That just totally went out of his mind. If you think that, that's the thing I love about faith. When you think about faith, faith is F-A-I-T-H. I want you to think about this for a minute. When Peter walked out of that boat, yes. he suspended all previous intelligence. He suspended that's all right. previous that's knowledge. That's right. He knew he couldn't walk on the water. That's right. But when he set his eyes on Jesus, now check this out, I love this part. He set his eyes on Jesus. His love yes. for Jesus was so powerful, he wanted to get out of that Right. And he told him, that's what you do. Yes. He's going to get that love so powerful. Yes. We don't want to be there. That's right. We that's want right. to get out of the boat. But, right. I, but I love that part because the moment he stepped that foot out onto that water, he was walking in a different knowledge. That's, that's right. right. In a different understanding. See, that's what faith does. F-A-I-T-H. Fruitful, anointed intelligence through him. Amen. And who is him? Amen. The holy intercessor. <laughs> the That's Jesus Christ. Hey, but see, when we activate faith, you think as you were talking about this yeah. today, challenge your faith. Yeah. When we activate in faith, what are we doing? We're activating a superior intelligence we've not previously. That's right, brother. And Amen. you know why we have it? Because we left the junk and we went to the end. There you go. <laughs> right. You know the thing is, too, Apostle, is yeah. Jesus never came to them when everything was going. Oh, come on. You see, come you, on, brother. Listen, the Lord wants to step out and call us out from where we are at the time we need him the most. Woo, come These on, men brother. were not selling at noon on a sunny day. Oh, come on, This brother. was in the God. middle of the night with the Storm winds blowing, gone. the water was Amen. capsizing. They were fearful. Jesus God, yes. is coming to us. Think about it. What's going on in our world? Oh, look at that. Praise the God. Pandemic this, yeah. And the things that's going on Amen. with all the racial tensions. Yes. Let me tell you something. He has challenged us yes, as believers on, today. Amen. And to step out of the norm yes, and to learn on. our tradition and our religious beliefs and our faults. And he is challenging us to come out of come that on, place brother. of comfortable, uh, of just going and attending church and to be the church. He's calling us out of the boat to get on the water, Woo! to meet Let's him, and it. to be everything hey, he's called man, to be. God, That's God. where he's calling us. Listen, it, he's coming to us at the darkest hour. I believe sure. revival is going to take this country over like oh, I've never seen before. God. Amen. And I'm just so glad I'm going to be a very small. Oh, part of it too, but I'm gonna tell you now. I'm gonna be a part of. It. Oh, I know you. I, I, I know want you. to be in the move of the oh, living God. Amen, Amen. Me too, brother. Good. This is the greatest day 
in the history of the church. Yes, it is. You don't need yes, to be getting is. discouraged and full of fear. You need to rise up That's and right. grab hold of yeah. the opportunity. People say, look what's going on. I say, oh, yeah, yeah. look at our God. Woo, look at my God's God's Lord, he's powerful. He's <laughs> almighty. He's mine. No matter what is going on around this church, I'm telling you, our God is able to go exceedingly above and beyond that, which we oh, ask him God. to do. And he's just getting started. I'm telling yeah, you, the that's move where God is coming. started, brother. We got yes. it. And there's a move coming like the people have never seen before. You and I have talked about this on yes. several occasions. The greatest revival that this country will ever yes. see will not come through one man, one no woman, way. one individual. No. You need to understand something. God's tired. Of the Christian superstars. What well, God wants is a bright and a morning star yes. that will bring life in That's right. That's right. I'll tell you something. That's what God is going to do. That's what we're going to see happening. Yes. Is you're going to see revival. And this is what's going to be most powerful. Revival is going to come through the body of Christ. Oh, absolutely. It's going to come when that, that calling in you yeah. reaches That's its right. maximum potential and you step out. You know, Jesus went to them walking on the yeah. This is not feasible. The disciples saw him, and they were very troubled. This is kind of scary. And it says, they cried out with fear. They were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. But immediately, Jesus spoke out to them and said, be of good cheer. Everything's okay. It's me. Don't be afraid. I know where you're at. You're still in that boat. I'm setting you up. You just get ready. I'm about to get you. I know exactly where you are. Although you didn't know where I was. I'm right here on the water. Walking where you've never walked before. I put you in the boat because because you're not where you need to be to be where I'm at. Come on. Listen, there is a time in our journey with Christ that he will challenge us to step out of our limited beliefs and tradition in order to take us to a whole other level of living life of water walking revelation. Ooh, right there, right there. Water walking revelation. He's trying to challenge you. He's on the water. And he's trying to challenge them to get out of the confines of their own abilities. These men were fishermen. They've been taught the only way to survive on the sea is to be in the boat. You want something? Yes, sir. I know you like it. He wants to get you out of the boat. One man in the boat said, Who was that man? Come on. Peter. The one that Jesus found in the boat. Yeah. Here you go. I'm going to get you right now. Just because that's where he found you. I like just asking in the morning right now. So just because that's where he found you doesn't mean that's where he wants you to be. Right.
He wants to challenge you when the winds are blowing. When the storms are raging, when the lightning's flashing, when the waves are crashing, that's when he wants to come to you in the midnight hour and say, come, come, come. Lord, is that you? Can I come? Come. The challenge was set. Are you ready to step out of the limitation of your own abilities? Are you ready to step out of the limit of your own religious thoughts? Are you ready to step out of your own ideas? Are you ready to step out of your theology? Are you ready to step out into that water walking revelation? To meet the maker, to meet the man that calls the seas, the man that created you, to meet who you are. Are you ready to step out of the confines of you read that same story in the book of Mark. It says when he was on the mountain praying, he looked and saw, and what did he see? He said, I see them battling the boat. Fighting. Fighting. Come on. This is what some of us look like. Yeah. Call men and women of God. Full of the Holy Ghost. Set and limited ourselves. Oh, somebody needs Jesus. Let me get up. Come on, church. Ain't you tired of fighting the boat? Ain't you tired of battling into your own abilities? Ain't you tired of fighting your own limitations? I dare you to step out and have one to walk in revelation. I mean, to know Jesus. I mean, that's who he is. We have beat ourselves to death trying to be who God called us to be. Your neighbor says, it's time for me to get out of the boat. Peter stepped out of that boat with trust and faith. Listen, that every disciple in that boat could have got out of that boat and walked on water. Every last one of them. Simon wasn't special. Matter of fact, he was the only one besides Judas that, that, that uh, uh, denied Jesus. Come on. He was the only one that denied him. But he stepped out of the boat. Come on. Ain't it funny that some of us that live kind of on the wild side of the Holy Ghost are the ones that are willing to get out of the boat, but the ones that are so religious and prosper, you know, the Pharisees, I'm so Pharisee, I'm so religious, I am a proper man of God. Why are they still in the boat? Why are they limiting the power of God? Why are they limiting the way the Holy Ghost moves in the churches? I challenge you men and women of God to start battling the boat, start battling the move of the Holy Spirit, and then get to walk on water with Jesus. Allow the Holy Ghost to have his way. Amen. Every one of them could have got out of the boat. But you didn't say, you can stay in the boat, but I'm getting out. I'm not staying. I am not going to put limits on what God can do in my life. This is for some of you. I'm going to stop putting limits on what God can do in my life. Just because that's where he found me doesn't mean that's what he wants me. That's right. He's called me. He was willing to come where I was. Amen. Amen. Church, are we willing to go where he is? Somebody hear me. It's good stuff. You be seated. Now I went way past my notes. I said, I'm going to 
get ahead. That's all right. Holy Ghost is going to be in charge. Glory to God. We see here when someone is not walking or operating in the confines of the natural, but when someone is operating outside of the natural, that the church is struck with fear. Some ministers and pastors and churches are afraid to allow the Holy Spirit to. When God begins to move and sends the invitation to step out, they're struck with fear. But Lord, and here's why. You might get some more messages. If I allow the Holy Ghost to have control, then I will have control. Come on. Uh -oh. Come on. Come on. Listen, do you think Peter knew how to walk on water? Do you think he knew Jesus did? That's why when he stepped out, he said, now, I know I can't do this. I've been a fisherman all my life, and I know good and well. The only thing that's floating is this boat. <laughs> so you're challenging me, Lord, to step out and give up complete control. Yes. You're challenging me to forget about everything they taught me in school. You're challenging me to forget everything my dad taught me about fishing. If you're going out in the water, you need a boat. Come on. My daddy never said, son, we're going fishing. We're going out. We're going to go out in the deep. Okay, let's load up the boat. We're not taking a boat. Then how are we getting out there? And that's what the Lord is saying to the church. Stop paddling the boat. And limiting God to the small confines of your abilities. And begin to trust Him. Get your eyes on Him. And step out in faith. And claim that He is who He is. And begin to walk not by your own abilities. But by His abilities. It is not I that liveth. But He that liveth in me. It's not what I can do. But it's what He can do through. This is not rocket science. I am not a very smart man. I do not have a degree. Come on. You talk to me 30 minutes, you'll know that. <laughs> I'm not an educated man. I have high school diploma. Proud of that. Took me 34 years. <laughs> but I got it. I'm a little smaller than others. <laughs> Quit school because I knew everything. <laughs> he stepped out of the water. He began to follow Jesus. Now listen. There's something I want to read you here that I have to tell you. It is better to step out of the boat. Listen, Peter was walking, had his eyes on Jesus. Got his eyes off the Lord and began to sink. You know the story. He lifted up. Jesus took him by the hand, picked him up, and said, Oh, you little old faith. You need more faith. You're, but Jesus wasn't disappointed. Jesus took the moment to teach you. See, what happens is when you don't step out in faith, you lose moments of being taught. What are you saying? I'm saying this. Is it better to stay in the boat and battle the storm and be saved? Or is it better to step out of the boat, walk on water, and sink and be taught? People say, well, I don't know. What's the question? And I say this. Is it better to stay in the boat or is it better to walk in the water even if you fell? Which is better? Listen, where is Jesus? Come on. Brother Tim, if I fail following him, let me fall. Come on. Amen, brother. Come on. Come on. Is it better to be safe in that boat, holding on and beating him with an oar? And say, I survived? Or is it better to be on the water, even if you sink? I say this, where was Jesus? 
Where was he at? Well, brother, he was on the water. Then that's where I want to be. Seek or not, that's where I want to be. It's in those moments of seeking that I learned and I taught to be more like him. I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people got a lot of heroes in their life. Jesus is my hero. Okay, last message we got to talk about. Oh, man. Yeah. Ended it up with a bang, man. Ended up strong. <laughs> it was good. It was good. So why don't you tell us about it? Oh man! First of all, it, it was it was such a powerful service. The praise and worship was awesome. And there was a young man blowing a trumpet, oh, and the trumpet blew something out of it. It was a morning through. I was there to bring help bring revival. <laughs> I received the revival, and the Lord did a work in me. It was wonderful, just a wonderful yeah. move of God. But this message was: Should I stay or should I go? Yeah. So even it goes right back to the second message: Should I stay in the boat? Or should I step out? Should I go and be what God has yes, called praise me God. to be? Amen. So in this message, the challenge is this. Do you want to stay in that stagnant Amen. place where you've always been? Do you want to be one that steps back and just observes? Or do you want do you want to be a participator Ooh, of what God, God is yes. doing? Amen. I Not don't an want observer, to watch a participant. No, I want to yeah. be involved. Amen. If there's a giant to be slain, I do want to slay I'm telling you. It's about the church stepping out and being everything that God called them to be. And to stop uh, asking the question, just like Elisha. Yes. Hey, man, we talk about in this a message. Elisha following Elijah the prophet. Yes. Amen. Everywhere he went, even when he was encouraged to stay behind, yes, yes. he said, I will not stay so behind. Do it. Just as sure as God is alive and you're, you're alive, alive, I ain't going with that. <laughs> now, what was it that Elisha was attracted to? Was it just the man? Oh, was no. it just Elijah? <laughs> no. Because I heard information? <laughs> no, no, sir. I've been informed that you're a prophet? No way. No, because really Elisha was experience. reminding his own business, and Elijah never said a word to him. He just walked by. But the anointing of yes, God yes. began to move. Yes, that, and Elijah right. said, I'm out. I'm, yeah, going. I'm, going. I'm going to go follow the anointing. And that's, that's where the church is. That's where, where is the anointing? Amen. That's where I want to be. So Elisha followed him, and even when he was encouraged to stay behind, he said, no way, man. I'm going with you. And even when the school of the prophets were standing off to the side and said, you're wasting your time, Come on. don't believe don't that. Listen, listen. No, forget it. I'm going with the anointing. And what was the result? A double no portion, portion of yeah. the Holy Ghost of God. My Lord, that's, that's what we need. I will not stay behind. Should I stay or should I go? I don't I'm know going, you, baby. But I'm going and I'm going to follow the anointing of God. And that's what the church is hungry for. The anointing of God. And that's what we've Man. got. I'll tell you, more than ever before in, the, in this time, Ministers have yeah. got to step aside, man, and let yes. God be God. Let the anointing let it flow. See, we need to have more of a demand for the anointing. Yes. What I don't understand is when we change the requirements that Jesus made. Yeah. When Jesus told his disciples, "Tarry ye in Jerusalem till you be endued with power yes. from on high," I want to know. Yeah. Who changed that requirement? I don't know. I'm telling you, if you're called for the Lord, you need to be wait. You need to wait till you are empowered with yes. anointing and power yes. to speak that word. Otherwise, you speak a letter and you don't speak the spirit. You don't letter kill him. Letter kill him, but the spirit brings life. life. And that's what we need. And what's John six and sixty three say? Oh the flesh profits you what? Nothing. Profits you absolutely, absolutely nothing. nothing. Hey, listen, we appreciate you so much for tuning in today. This is inside in the ministry. Yes. Apostle Timothy Vanover and Chuck McSweeney. Now, sh now, Chuck will be back again many times. You'll be seeing him around here a lot. Yes. Uh, but, Chuck, I'll tell you something. Uh, why don't you tell the folks real quick if they wanted to get a hold of you, if they needed to get in touch with you. I know sure. you can be found on Facebook. Sure. Yep. But if they wanted to get a hold of you, maybe have you come for a service. Yes, absolutely. Maybe so why don't you tell them how to get a hold of you? Absolutely. You can reach out to Rob. Yes, Christ. all the time. can we'll give you the information if you'd like. Uh, you can reach out to me on Facebook at uh, Chuck McSweeney. Uh, we're from Gainesville, Florida. Uh, also, my phone, if you would like to reach out. Now, I will tell you, send me a text message because I just don't answer <laughs> any call. That's true. Uh, and leave me a message of who you are and what you're calling about. <laughs> uh, that number is 352 293-6900. We are uh, right now scheduling bookings for the rest yes, of the year, sure. and we're already booking for next year. So if you would like for us to come and minister at your church, listen, just because you call and ask me to come, don't mean I'll come. I will be honest yes, with you. I like to pray about where spirit. God wants me to be. I'm not trying to fill a calendar. I'm trying to trying be to where God, God wants me to, to be, be. Yeah, yeah. and to a group of people that are ready and hungry to hear the Word of Amen. God, Present. not with man's wisdom, but with the Spirit of demonstration and power. power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. That's right. My preaching attention was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but the demonstration to word of, of God. the Spirit and power of God.
Amen. Amen. Lord. Yes. I'll tell you, and I want to say too, uh, Chuck McSweeney and his beautiful wife, Sonia. Yes. <clears throat> they've been extremely good friends of mine and Jenny's for a long time. And Chuck is a fully sanctioned RFC minister. Yes, sir. We're glad to have him with us. And I'll tell you, just be paying attention because he's going to be with us doing a lot of things in the future. Yeah. So get ready. Praise God. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Sit back, relax, get ready. Here is Apostle Chuck McSweeney preaching a message recorded live at the Old Bible for Christ. And we read in the scriptures all through the Bible where men and women were faced with this same challenge. Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go? Go with me to Numbers chapter 13. Let's take a trip. You know I always like to take you on a trip. Numbers chapter 13. Let's go to verse 30. Let's read this scripture. Now this is Joshua and Caleb. They had been one of the 12 spies that was sent out to spy the land. They had went out and they had come back now to give the report. Yes. Caleb quieted the people right before Moses and he said, what? What did he say? Let us go. Would you say, say, let us go. Let us go at once and take possession. I wish we could learn just to take possession of what God has promised us. We are living way below the standards that God has set for us in our lives. There are things of God that we are supposed to possess that we do not possess because we are not willing to go. Oh, let's never say, I need to be willing. But the men that had gone up with them said, we're not able to go. We're not able to go. Why? Because there are people there that are stronger than me. Come on. Come on. Oh, somebody hear me. That there are people there that are stronger than me. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report. For the land which they spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that what? Devours the inhabitants. And all the people who we saw are men of great stature. They're giants. So we can't go there. They're greater than us. Yes, come on, brother. I'm here to tell you today, we've been commissioned to go. Yes. And the souls are ripe and ready to be harvested. But yet we see all the things of the enemy that are out there that comes against us and all of a sudden we're struck by fear. That what the enemy has is greater than what we have. But see, that's when you pull out your 44 Magnum. And that is for John 4 and 4. 44. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. We need to stop being fearful of the callings of God and be willing to go. That's right, brother. Come on. And stop looking at the size of the enemy. Yeah. And allow the enemy to size us up. That's right. Uh -huh. Hello? Come on. Come on, brother. Joshua and Caleb said, We are able, if you continue to read, we are able to take the land. Look at your neighbor and say, we're able. We're able. We're able. Look at your neighbor and say, you're able. Should I stay or should I go? I say to you, friend, you go. And you take the land. You take the possessions that God's prepared for you. People begin to grumble and moan in chapter 14. And they say, why don't we just go back to Egypt? What we preached last night about the boat. They went back to what they left. And instead of going, these people had decided that they were willing to go back from where they were delivered, amen, to keep from having to face what's ahead. I'm here to tell you, do not let fear challenge you to the point where you can't go ahead. That you can't go forward and face the enemy so that you may possess the promises of God that he has laid up for you. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has prepared for those who love him. Those promises belong to you, my friend. Amen. 
First Samuel chapter 17, verse 31. This is about a little boy named David. Anybody remember David? David was faced again with a situation. He went to take his brothers a bag of lunch because they were tired, because they were such great warriors. David went there as a servant to feed his brothers. But when he came to the visit, he heard a giant start to defy God and his armies. David was struck within his heart and he said, Who is this man that defies God and his armies? Come on now. Come on, church. This pandemic. Come on. Come on. This thing that's happened in your city, trying to divide us through race. Hey Amen. This enemy, this giant that's trying to divide the church. I say to that pandemic, I say to this racial tension, I say to this division that the enemy is bringing into the church. Who are you to defy God and his armies? I say to you, I will not allow the enemy to defy us and keep us. The of the oh, amen. Amen. We will not allow that to happen. That's right. As the church and the living God, we cannot allow that to happen. Amen. David went to the king and he said, Listen, I am willing. I am willing. To face this child. Yeah, Somebody in here needs to go to the king and say, I am willing to go against this giant. Yeah. Honey, we're waiting for politicians to make the move. We're waiting for our mayors and our governors and our president to make the move against this battle. But I'm here to tell you, this battle is not carnal. This battle cannot be won in a good move. This battle cannot be won by walking down the middle of the street. I mean, this battle will be won when the church of the living God falls on their face before him and cries out to him and declares to him. Hey, talk is cheap. That's right. Come on. Yep. Action. Come on, church. Talk is cheap. It's time for action. Come That's on. right, brother. Come on. That's right. Right on. We can talk about all the things we want to do, but it never does you any good. That's right. right. Anybody ever meet somebody that's just a big planner? Yep. They plan everything. They got ideas all the time. I got a plan. I got a plan. I got an idea. Hello? You ever meet anybody like that? But usually those big plan out of people never take action in the plan. All they have is ideas. All they have is thoughts. My Bible teaches me to capture every thought. What do you mean? Capture every thought. Everything that comes to my mind that I think I'm able to do, I need to capture that thing. And I need to let this mind in me be a mind of Christ. I need to begin, begin to think like Jesus thinks. Yeah. Hey Amen. You don't do evil against evil. Right. You do good against evil. Amen. Hey man, you don't hate your brother, you love your brother. Come on, somebody hear what I'm telling you. How do they know we're his disciples? Because we love one another. Because we love one another. Honey, you cannot call yourself a child of God and not love one another. Regardless of race or nationality, where you're from, how you speak, how you walk, what's over the church door. Honey, you love one another. David did not focus on his brothers. You hear this. He did not focus on his brothers. 
your brother is not your enemy. Right. And you say, well, they weren't doing anything. That's because God called you. <laughs> Hello? Well, why did he call me? Because you were willing to be a servant. And when you're willing to be a servant, you will find the calling to God. David went to the king and said, I will go. He was willing to go and face the enemy. Somebody said, well, how did he go? He went with what he was equipped with. They tried to equip him with their own armor. They tried to put their armor on him. So let me tell you something. We are trying to put on religious armor. We are trying to put on theology. We are trying to put on all these things that man has made. Amen. And approach the church so that they will accept us. But I'm here to tell you, I'm not here to have the church accept me. I am here to have the church accept Jesus Christ, the King of Kings of all the Lord. I will not wear the armor of man, but I will go in the name of the Lord. David said, I have not proved myself with these things. I have not been taught with these things. This is not how God anointed me. This is not where he found me. I was tending the sheep of my own business. I was the grace of God. And then all of a sudden, the prophet called me out, anointed my head with oil, and the same God that delivered me from the light, the same God that delivered me from the dark, will deliver the sinner into my I will go. Not only will I go, but I will go with the expectation that God is able. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Man, I, I love Apostle Chuck. He's a great friend of ours. I've known Chuck for many, many years. Good friend of mine. We had a great time with him in Truman, Arkansas. Had a great time with him here at our church. If you want any information about Apostle Chuck and Swinney, you'd like to invite him to your church, give us a call. He's a great minister, and I guarantee you, he will bless your people. Uh, give us a call at 405-793-1777. That's 405-793-1777. And we'll be glad to pray with you or give you any information if you'd like to have him come to your church. Thanks for tuning in to the Revival for Christ Club. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. So happy to be a part of Christ Family Network. Whatever you do today, let the anointing, let the Spirit of God come alive in your life. Let that light shine. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Hello, my name is Ryan Colley. I am the Administrative Vice President and International Evangelist of Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. We thank you so much for tuning in. And if you would like to support, there are many ways you can do that. First, you can do it by phone, by credit card, 405-793-1777. You can support also by mail at 1005 Southwest 4th Street in Moore, Oklahoma, 73160. Also, if you have the cash app, it's money sign RFC ROAR. That's RFC ROAR. Thanks so much for tuning in again. We are Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. We are a ministry with a vision. Build our plan, the Word of God. Thank you and God bless.